Hello my friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Annovella. Today is Friday and that means a deep dive. I've been promising a couple of weeks now that I would do a deep dive into the Mann family. Of course everybody has heard of Thomas Mann, but have you ever heard of Golo Mann or Michael Mann? Not the uh, director, but the musician. Uh, Eric Mann, uh, Klaus Mann, Heinrich Mann. There are a lot of people. Let's start with the beginning. So, Thomas Mann was married to Katja Mann for 50 years. And together they had six children. Although Thomas Mann was actually more gay than straight. He was, yeah, you can call him bisexual, but he was more gay than anything else. And he also has a very well-known, uh, or in the time, a very well-known brother, his older brother, Heinrich Mann, who is also an author, was an author. And Thomas Mann was really, really, really famous, like in world famous, and that was quite rare in those days. Now, together they had six children. They uh, had three boys, three girls. And Katja did everything. She was the master of the house. She kept the children away from Thomas because Thomas had to write. She had to do everything in her power to keep him writing and to keep him away from all sorts of distractions. Thomas Mann doesn't really have a relationship with his children. When he addresses his children, it's via a newsletter. Yep, the kind of newsletters you send to everybody, not necessarily to your children if you want to discuss a problem with them. But he did. Anyway, he has six children. The eldest is Erika Mann. Erika Mann is, um, yeah, a very talented, very outgoing, very, yeah full of life kind of person. She is an actress, she is an author, she is a journalist, uh, she is a feminist, she is an activist and her brother, her oldest, well, her brother that comes after her is Klaus Mann and they act like they are twins in a way. They are very, very close together. When you see uh, Klaus, you see Erika and vice versa. It's, they, they don't leave each other's side, or hardly. Together they do a lot of stuff. Um, so at a very early age, I believe when she was 19 or 20, she marries an actor. Gustav Grünchens and but that wasn't a very good match and a year later they already uh, get divorced. Now Klaus Mann never liked that guy and especially later in their years they he Gustav takes advantage of the Nazi power and to have a really famous career as an actor. And Klaus Mann writes a book about him, about an, an actor that sells his soul to the devil. The book is called Mephisto. Together with Erika Mann, they also act and they have performances together and he also write a theater plays for his sister among which one of the first lesbian theater plays ever written and that was somewhat of a scandal but the parents went and they loved it and they were proud of their children and then when the 
Nazis became more and more powerful, they started a sort of cabaret named the Pfeffermühle. And with that they traveled all over Europe and they were very famous in Paris and Amsterdam, mostly Amsterdam. But after a while the Minister of um, Work Let's call it like that. And he refused to give them um, a visa, uh, so they had to leave. And then they crossed the ocean, went to the States to perform again with the Pfeffermühle, now called the Peppermill. But people didn't get their jokes. They weren't that familiar with uh, German uh, politics and inside jokes and their English wasn't very good at the time. And so that was um, not successful. Erika and Klaus traveled the world, stayed in very, very, very expensive hotel rooms and yeah, um, left the checks uh, for Katja to pay. She wasn't happy with it, but every time she pays them in the end. So yeah, it's a bit of a, uh, they, they were yeah spoiled brats often. So at a certain point they meet Annemarie Schwarzenbach. Annemarie Schwarzenbach was a very wealthy heiress from um, heiress from uh, Switzerland and she funded a newspaper or a magazine uh, called Die Sammlung uh, that was edited by uh, Klausmann and that was yeah, a sort of a manifesto against the Nazis again and f fascism. She uh, was also a huge drug addict and that was even a worse influence for Klaus Mann because Klaus Mann was already addicted to opioids and yeah, with, together with uh, Anne-Marie Schwarzenbach it, it, it became really horrible. Uh, he was addicted to heroin uh, till the end of his life and that was uh, in 1949. But then again, Die was an um, magazine edited by, um, uh, well, published by Querido in Amsterdam. And a lot of famous authors uh, contribute to uh, this magazine. Of course, Heinrich Mann, Thomas Mann, but also Stefan Zweig and uh, Auden Huxley and important people. And then, yeah, of course, they had to flee when uh, the Germans invaded Europe. Erika, she tried, she worked as a correspondent, a war correspondent from London during the World War. And um, she wrote stuff and uh, she worked after the war. After the war, she worked for her father up until 1955, when Thomas Mann died. And then she stayed with her mother and also passed away in 1969. Uh, Thomas Klaus Mann uh, passed away in 49 due to uh, depression and overdose. And yeah, of course that affected uh, Erika Mann deeply and she also got deeply depressed, but she wasn't an addict as a brother. Then we have the third child and that's Goloman. Goloman was called the, the ugly duckling. Oh yeah, that's uh, another typical uh, thing of the Manns. They had their favorite children and they let everybody know. Yeah. And Goloman wasn't their favorite. Goloman was called the Ugly Duckling, like I said before, and he was from a very young age sent to a boarding school. But for him, that was 
a marvelous decision. And Goloman became a really good historian. I believe he also had a sort of a radio program during the World War. And uh, yeah, he, he wrote some really good biographies. And he also uh, made a very famous, he also has a very famous quote about Bismarck. He said, uh, Bismarck defended Germany, but not the Germans. So yeah, it was, uh, Goloman was a really, uh, really interesting figure. He um, was a very good historian, a very good biographer. He was very open with his uh, sexuality. He was also openly gay. He uh, then met a man who had children and they formed a family and yeah, he was really happy. He, he um, passed away at a very old age and uh, happy. So yeah, um, during the war, he first uh, went to Czechoslovakia, but that wasn't a good idea. Then he traveled to uh, the US. And then after the war, he uh, went to Switzerland and then uh, he became again uh, in 75 a German citizen again. So yeah, he, he really couldn't miss Germany. He really missed the language. And then, yeah, then we have Monika Mann. Monika Mann was uh, also not a favorite. Uh, they thought she was stupid and, yeah, uh, not very pretty. Monika Mann really wanted to be a musician, but uh, although she really had a heart to... to um, exercise and to really study, 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 study on the, uh, on the piano, but it wasn't good enough. Her music wasn't good enough. And then um, she married a guy in 1939 and when they fled to um, Canada, uh, where they took a boat, they took a boat to Canada. The boat was torpedoed by a U-boat and um, she was saved, her husband died, and on the same lifeboat was Anthony Quinn and his family. And then we have Elisabeth Mann. Elisabeth Mann was the uh, parents' favorite. She was the most intelligent one, the prettiest one, the, talented, the most talented one. She was a very good pianist. But Elizabeth Mann, uh, and celloist, uh, she uh, got a yeah. She studied cello and piano and was really really good at it. She was a concert pianist and uh, celloist. And um, but she married a man named Borghese, Antonio Borghese. He was a professor at the University of uh, Berkeley, I think. Uh, he was uh, of literature and uh, she stayed married to him all of her life. But actually, uh, Elizabeth Mann is known as the mother of the seas. She was the founding, uh, one of the founders of uh, the Club of Rome and they um, do everything to protect the oceans and sea life. And yeah, she did everything. She was a very, very good uh, politician. She was very good at uh, connecting people. She was a bit of a lobbyist. She did everything to for world peace and stuff like that. But mostly the oceans was, sea life was her passion and she did a whole lot of stuff for that. I believe she was also the uh, last of the months who uh, passed away, I believe that was in 2002. And then, um, oh yeah, and she uh, also loved writing science fiction stories. So that she also did a whole lot of writing and she, I think she published four or five books. I'm not sure, but something like that. And then we have um, 
Michael Mann, not the uh, director but the musician slash uh, uh, literature, uh, professor of literature. Michael Mann was um, yeah, the youngest, he uh, was a very good violinist and he he played the bigger violin um, and he um, recorded a couple of albums, he was very inspirational and uh, then he became, uh, later on, he, he juggled between uh, giving concerts and teaching. Michael Mann was had the same issues as his oldest brother, uh, Klaus Mann. He struggled with alcoholism and depression and also took his own life in the 50s, I believe. And that's about it. That's the whole uh, Mann family. They called their father first uh, their altar and or the old one or uh, the old man and later on when he published uh, the, uh, the Magic Mountain they called him, him the magician. Katja Mann uh, lived for another 30 years I believe after his death and yeah she was a happy woman uh, afterwards. <laughs> I don't think it was an easy life for her having uh, at least three children that didn't want to grow up, especially the two eldest one, uh, ones, and yeah, they they um, they really took advantage of their mother. And but she also hit the children way. She kept the children way too far from their father, or maybe he he wasn't just not that interested. That's also possible. So yeah, that's about it. That's my little talk about the Mount family. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching. I see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.